Introducing BayWeb's new professional thermostat, distributed by Thermalert.com. Hi, my name is Bill from Thermalert, and I'm here to give you a detailed analysis of the software for the professional model for the BayWeb thermostat. The first thing that comes up is uh, the uh, thermostat settings on your computer. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to settings. So we'll click here on settings, and that will pull up our next menu. And you'll see that there's a number of different tabs at the top. The first tab is called general. And here in the general tab, you can rename your thermostat uh, to whatever you want to name it. You can name it uh, House or House One, or you can put the address in there, whatever you like. The second is the time zone. You can put whatever time zone you're in, click on it, and it will remember the time zone. Uh, then you go ahead and put in your state. Uh, I happen to live in Nevada, in Las Vegas here. And then you can go ahead and put your address in so forth. The next tab is the equipment tab and this is a really important uh, tab because the equipment tab denotes what kind of equipment you have. Do you have a heat pump or do you have conventional heating and cooling? Do you have just conventional heat only, cooling only, so on and so forth. So it is very important to select the type of air conditioner that you have. Uh, most of the air conditioners here in Las Vegas are heat pumps and so therefore they have a reversing valve and uh, you need to make sure that uh, the reversing valve wire is hooked up and uh, the software is uh, selected appropriately. The next is the, what, you know, what kind of heat do you have, fossil. Um, the next one is whether or not it is uh, automatic changeover. You can change over the um, heating to cooling. Uh, here in Las Vegas, it gets really cold, but then again, it gets really hot, so you can change it on the fly. The next uh, tab is the keypad, and you can select various options on the keypad. Number one, you can select it in degrees or in Fahrenheit, or you can select it in Celsius. You can also um, limit the keypad to uh, allow people to go up to 90 degrees or not below 50 degrees and you can select those on this particular piece of software. This is on the keypad software. You can lock out the keypad. Uh, you can lock out the hold so people can't um, punch the button and then uh, basically you lose control over it with the software. Uh, you can lock them out from doing that. You can have a hold duration. Uh, I want to let them hold but I want to let them hold it for only 60 minutes or so. And then I want to not be able to have them lock out. The next tab is called the set points. And uh, the occupancy sensing I do not have uh, working at this time because um, I desire not to have it. Um, but you can um, set the occupancy sensor so that if you walk into a room, it'll stay on for 30 minutes or an hour or two hours or whatever you'd like to say and set it for. The uh, minimum circulation time is the time the fan works um, uh, circulating the air. This keeps the temperature in the air in the uh, office or at, in the home uh, a little bit more stable in terms of the temperature. The next tab that we'll look at is the alerting tab. Now the alerting tab has the ability to put multiple email addresses in there. So you can put your e email address in there along with someone else's email address and this thermostat will alert these email addresses whenever it gets an alert. Uh, it has three different inputs so you could have three different areas of alarm that could go to multiple people as long as you separate the uh, email address with the commons. There's a minimum alert frequency. You can have it go off every 10 minutes and email you every 10 minutes. You can do every 30 minutes, every hour, so on and so forth. Um, there is an offline alert. Uh, it can notify you uh, daily or, or every 10 minutes if your thermostat is offline. You can have a high temperature alert and low temperature alert. So if your house gets above, say, 
90 degrees or 85 degrees. Uh, you can set them here. Uh, if it goes below 40 degrees or below 45 degrees, you can set them. You can also enable the, um, the alerting or disable the alerting. Uh, the occupancy sensor is on that first line there and the uh, house code and unit code are set by the occupancy sensor itself and uh, you can also go to these particular tabs and change that to whatever you want so you don't have any conflicts. Um, you can also uh, put in an email address uh, to alert you uh, if there's any alarms on those uh, sensors. The uh, inputs are interesting. They have either digital or you can do by temperature, uh, supply temperature, outdoor temperature, or average temperature. So the three different inputs are either an alarm or they're either digital or they're analog. In the analog you get all these temperature areas and supply and so forth. Um, <clears throat> uh, if you choose supply you get a lot of other options that you can use. If you go to temperature these uh, different temperature settings that you can um, select are basically different, sens uh, different sensors that are located either inside or outside the house. Um, the majority of these sensors, in fact all of these sensors, are just a thermistor that uh, measures resistance. Um, the inputs are either going to be digital or they're going to be a uh, thermistor controlled uh, sensor. Um, if you set it to temperature, uh, there are some other options. Uh, if you go to the right of the word temperature, you can see that there's a low setting and a high setting. The low setting is the setting in which it will alert you if the temperature of that particular probe goes below that setting or above that setting. That's your, um, uh, those are your limits. So you can set two of them to temperature and one of them to digital. Uh, the digital could be a door contact of some sort. Output W2 and Y2, these are used if you're not using any uh, secondary um, uh, heating and cooling. Some people have uh, two compressors and uh, they use them for heat and cooling. So they're second stage, what we call second stage air conditioning. Um, if you're not using these, you can use these relays to do a number of different things. If you set them for relay, you can label the relay, and I just labeled mine hot tub and fireplace. And so, therefore, I can selectively turn on and off these relays by my uh, smartphone, and I can turn on the hot tub or turn off the hot tub um, as I choose. And uh, that's kind of a neat little thing. Um, it also gives you some other in, uh, information when you go to the, your energy tab and your API tab is uh, a tab in which you can enable it to uh, generate some uh, code that you can use in your web um, to determine what the temperature is of your house or wherever you've got your um, Bay Web thermostat. So let's go back to our schedule. Once we've done our settings we go to our schedule and on our schedule page we can actually go and set the upper and lower limits of our thermostat. We can also change it so that it's an automatic changeover from heating to cooling and um, we can select whether it's heat, cool or auto. I'm going to select auto in this particular instance and then I can slide my low temperature and high temperature settings just like you would on a thermostat. I can set them high and low and you can determine um, when the air conditioner is going to come on or when the heat's going to come on. This area in here, this blue area, is where the sleep time is denoted and I can just change it by dragging and dropping and then uh, hitting the button to let the computer know that I'm going to be home at that particular time and not asleep. The tan area here is when it's occupied and um, the, the green area is when I'm away. So you can see that if your air conditioner is running 24-7 
the tan area and the blue area are the only areas in which the air conditioner is going to be on. For it. This is my hot tub. Now I want my hot tub to be on in certain periods of time. Um, that would be the green area now, and I want it to be shut off during the other portion of time. Um, this saves quite a bit of money. You may not realize it, but it saves quite a bit of power on your power bill every month. The fireplace, um, sometimes you want the fireplace to just automatically come on or go off. You could do that just with a schedule. So these schedules will turn on and off W2 and Y2 uh, relays whenever you schedule them. Uh, you can have an open door lockout. This means that when you open the door uh, after so many minutes, and that's uh, on the, uh, I believe, on the equipment uh, tab, so many minutes it will shut the air conditioner off. There's no sense in having the air conditioner. Uh, I'm sorry, that's on the set point uh, tab. You can see that uh, the air conditioner, after so many minutes of that door being opened, the air conditioner will just shut off. There's no sense in heating the outdoors. So you can put in there 10 minutes, or if the door's open for 10 minutes, you want the air conditioner to shut off. So that's another use for um, the open door lockout set point. So now if we go to our status tab, uh, you can see that the um, status of the house is 72 degrees. Uh, I don't have a probe hooked up to input 1 or 2, so it shows a negative uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, open uh, Input number 3 is open, uh, but you can see the uh, various functions of the, of the uh, house and its operation. There you have it. If there's any questions you might have, uh, you can always go to our website, thermalalert.com, and uh, there's a phone number there you can call. Uh, we can answer any questions you have. Uh, just give us a call. And uh, this thermostat is one of the greatest things that I've seen come along in a long time. And it's relatively inexpensive compared to what it will do. Thanks for listening. Bye now.